It's not much, but it's worked because there's been enough oxygen. There's no pump in here. The fish haven't died. I got frogs. I got insects. I got all kinds of things growing. I mean, I've got a, a functioning, healthy ecosystem for no money. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com. I thought I'd give a little update on my pollen project that I started last spring. So last spring, I had nothing here. Uh, I dug a hole. I created a French drain system. I had a drainage problem in my garden where water was just rushing down the hill and washing everything away and messing up the apple trees and all that sort of stuff. So I thought, why don't I put a French drain in? Then I thought, as long as I'm putting in a French drain, why don't I dig a big hole and uh, make a natural pond? Which is what I did. And I've got videos step by step of me making this thing. There's no bladder in this pond. This is a hole in the ground. Um, all I, and all these, uh, I, I went to uh, ditches in the area where I live and just grabbed some ditch plants and put them around. Um, I can't believe the amount of, these are cattails. I, I did not plant cattails here. All I did when I set this thing up was I went to a uh, sort of pond type area where I live and just scooped up a bunch of mud and water and nasty stuff out of the pond and I dumped it in here. And I assumed that there would be cattail seeds and, you know, pond plant stuff in that nasty water. And, I mean, I can only see, I don't know if you can see that guy over there, but there's a frog over there. I was out here with my daughter the other day, and there was three frogs here. And I, was, I, mean, I can't, there's one right there, I don't know if you can see another thing, there's a water, water skipper, water strider, whatever those are called. I can never remember the technical name, but it's those spider looking things that walk on top of the water. Um, so I got those, those were here within, I don't know. Within two weeks of, of the hole being complete and it filling up with water, I had those things. Um, these came along midsummer. Um, just cattails that started growing on their own. Um, water wise, it holds water pretty good, I have to say. Uh, twice this summer, I've had to, you can see I've got a garden hose here, right? Twice this summer, I've turned that on while I was out working in the garden. And let it fill up because the water was getting really low because we just yeah, we haven't had a lot of rain this summer but it's held water i mean the water is not seeping out through the bottom the water is just evaporating off as far as i can tell um one of the challenges i had when i first made the pond there was another frog right there i don't know if you can see that guy in there bigger one in there uh, let's see Maybe he won't run away yeah, right there. See him? And there's probably, there's usually three in here. Usually the three that I can see. And I've even seen garter snakes hanging around, probably trying to pick off the frogs. Um, uh, anyway, one of the problems I had when I first set the pond up was that there was, uh, the water was unbelievably cloudy. And it just would not uncloud. Uh, so I did a bunch of reading. And what I understood from the reading was that uh, clay particles in water have, I can't remember if it's positive or negative, but they basically all have one charge that's the same polarity. So the little clay particles just sort of bounce around off each other and they never settle out. That can happen if you've got a preponderance of clay particles in your pond water. So what I read was you take pelletized gypsum, um, which is, you know, uh, pH neutral, gypsum, not lime, pelletized gypsum, pH neutral, you put that in the water and it reacts because it's got a different charge, right? Um, I mean, this is very chemistry, science-y type, physics-y type stuff, but basically it, it reacts with the clay particles. The clay particles are, are, are t attracted to the gypsum and they form like a clay gypsum ball and they sink to the bottom and settle out. Okay, so that's how I, I mean, this is not perfectly clear, um, but it's way clearer. I can see down about eight inches into the water. It's, it's too dark and there's too much reflection for you to see it right now. Um, but, you know, for the first month while I was waiting for this to settle out, it was just constantly cloudy, never cleared up, right? Once I put the gypsum in, 
I mean, there's fanciful ways to do the calculation for what gypsum, gypsum, how much gypsum pellets you need. All I did was come out here every night and throw 10 handfuls in the water. And after four nights, the water cleared. Okay. Another argument for doing that is the combination of the gypsum and the clay. It almost forms like a kind of cement in the bed of the pond. So anywhere at the base of the pond where the water is seeping into the ground, all those sort of clay gypsum particles sort of plug that up. So I noticed after I did all of that, I mean, it's not like it's surrounded in concrete. It didn't form like a concrete line or anything like that, but it just held water way, way, way better. The water does not seep out of this thing. It just slowly, you know, we get a good rain, it fills up, and then it just slowly, slowly, slowly evaporates. Um, I've got about a dozen fish living in here. They're just minnows. Um, you can't see them tonight. They're hiding somewhere. They're usually down deep because it's been warm these warm days. Um, I haven't seen them actually for a couple weeks, um, but I know they're there, right? If I come, or if I if I check at all hours, if I come out every couple hours and I quietly walk up to the pond, especially you know this time of year, it's more like really early in the morning you might see them. Sometimes they might be in the shallows and places like that. Um, but yeah, I've got about a dozen. They're called rosy red minnows. They're kind of look like tiny goldfish. They've been living in the pond uh, since May. I haven't fed them. Well, I mean, one day I came in with a little bit of bread just to bring them around. I should have done that for this video. Um, if you put a little bit of bread near the shallow spots and wait some time, they'll come out and start pecking at the bread. But, I mean, other than to just show them to my kids, I have not fed. Look, there's a... I don't know, oh, you can't see, but anyway, there's other aquatic insects. They look like um, little, I don't know what they're called, but they're like little black, maybe a boatman? It's like a black beetle that swims underwater. Um, looks like a black bean swimming in the water. I don't know how those got in there, but they're in there too. I mean, I've basically got a thriving pond system that's self-managed and fish living in it that haven't died. There's been no floaters. When I first put them in, one or two died. Um, but that's typical with rosy red minnows because they're treated so poorly when they're they're transported. The, the rosy red minnows are are captured and raised and sold in fish stores to feed other fish, so they're not treated really nice, right? <laughs> so in a sense, these are like rescue fish. Um, so <laughs> anyway, they've been living here since May. I have not fed them once. They've been fine. Uh, this time of year, they seem to like to be down really, really deep. Um, this doesn't seem like much of a pond, but I dug a deep, about two foot diameter hole that goes down about five feet relative to grade. So the fish would have a deep, dark, cold place to go to get oxygen and things like the colder water has more oxygen. So when it's hot, they just go down to the bottom, right? They can also hide from frogs and other things down there. Um, so I think that's all I get to say about that. Um, other than <laughs> I've decided that putting the pond here was a... Uh, you know, it was a success in terms of creating it in one season, right? In one season, I went from having no pond to having a, basically a self-perpetuating, self-sustaining ecosystem. I, you know, it's never gone dry. It's just there's been a, twice this summer where the water's gone down. And rather than just leave it up to chance, I've decided to just turn the hose on and fill it up. You know, put about a bathtub's worth of water into the pond that's not bad for an entire summer right especially with temperatures being the way they are um, and in both those cases we did have a good rain i just was worried about the fish and waiting too long and, and there, you know i have a well here i'm not on city water so i you know and the well's like i don't know 100 feet down it's very deep well so 100 feet or 100 meters probably 100 meters is very deep 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 well way down the ground if my well runs out of water the world's ending <laughs> it's so deep <laughs> you know there's always water down there sort of thing right um so you know a couple times this summer i turned the uh, turned the hose on just to just to help the fish out and give them a little break uh, i didn't feel it was fair to them to run a complete science experiment with their little lives um but i'm pretty confident they would have made it anyway because within about a week of me turning that hose on in both cases we had a good rain and you can see them adjacent to a big hill here, right? So the water comes down the hill, washes in my garden, comes down through this French drain and goes into the pond. And when the pond overflows, there's a little overflow thing here and it goes all the way down into the woods over there. Um, so it totally works. 
without a bladder, without spending any real, the only money I spent was on that one bag of pelletized gypsum, five bucks. <laughs> That's the money I spent on it. And I bought this thing. I guess I should mention this thing here. So this is a, uh, one of these solar uh, fountains. Okay. But what I did with it was I, I disconnected the fountain part and I connect, connected a hose to it. So when it's sunny, the pump pumps water and it goes there's sort of like a little almost looks like a river coming into the pond so the hose goes up oh, about a couple a foot or so into this bushy stuff here and slowly you know water trickles down through that sort of I call it the creek right so there's you can't even see it now because it's all covered but if you look closely there's there's rocks and see the rocks and stuff there right so there's a hose going up and it can pump that far right so when it's good and sunny the that solar pump pumps water up the hose to this little sort of creek right and it's it goes at about the rate of a tap on this really low setting and the water just trickles back in right it rolls through this vegetation and so that way it's not pure standing water there's a degree of circulation right water is being sucked sucked up and out uh, the whole season I had to clean this once because it got plugged up and actually that's when I did this thing where I lowered it because this here the way it's designed it sucks the water from right beneath the surface where you get a lot of floaty things so by just <laughs> pushing it out and having it dangle below it still works just fine right I just got a little bit of a hose there like a what you call that like a stint uh, to connect the you know this this thing the thing by my pinky there is supposed to be connected to a fountain that that squirts up into the air right but you don't want that because all that does is just cause condensation the water to go away but you do want some circulation of the water so by shooting it up there over the rocks and through the vegetation and all the way back down it sort of behaves like a you know in a natural system you'd have water evaporate collects in the clouds it rains back down and it trickles back into the water through that system so I'm just sort of copying that with this little $20 solar fountain <laughs> right so every day when it's sunny there's water circulating around it's not much but it's worked because there's been enough oxygen there's no pump in here the fish haven't died I got frogs I got insects I got all kinds of things growing I mean I've got a, a functioning healthy ecosystem for no money now the hard part is turning this um, i've got a couple young guys down the street that want to make some money so i'm going to have them here um, later in the month digging and digging and digging uh, a massive garden let me show you what i'm planning to do there not a massive garden a massive pond so all the water that comes into my garden comes down this hill so i thought it made sense since this spot has never been I mean, I got some stuff growing here, but look how look how far behind these tomatoes are. Right? Look how stunted this zucchini is. I got strawberries here, and I got strawberries over here. These strawberries had about six times, maybe even ten times, but at least six times the yield of these ones. Right? I mean, I just harvested tomatoes from this garden right this should be ripe this time of year right like that right so this is just there's things i can i find this to be a decent potato garden it's not bad for growing spinach and lettuce and some things like that but it just because it's in the shade here the sun sets over there it's just not a good spot so and because all the water collects here anyway i thought it would be it would make sense and i've had viewers suggest this i'm sorry if i can't remember your names but this should be what they call a swale. You've got a hill. You've got a water collection spot, right? I can have this, this swale roll over into this French drain. Or I can have it just guided down to over that part of the garden. But it's going to be a big pond. It's going to be about 12 feet long, right? A good 6 feet deep at its deepest. And 6 feet wide at its widest. It's going to come out gonna come out here and be like a big big piece right? I got other things I want to do maybe I got a whole bunch of things I want to do with the garden this year 
I don't know how I'm going to pull this all off. And I don't, I just, I've got this energy for it, so I want to sort of run with that. <laughs> and thankfully I've got a couple sort of end of high school, beginning of university young fellas uh, to help me out with uh, the hard part of digging all of this. Uh, I could have a guy in here with uh, uh, sort of uh, backhoe, but it would just trash. It would be very difficult to get it. it would, well, it would be impossible to get it in here without trashing the garden. And because I still have things growing, and I still have things sort of working away. Uh, I would be inclined to wait till like the end of October to do all that. And it would be a bit late for moving all the goldfish and moving all the, it just moving everything. So I sort of rather get at it sooner than later. So anyway, just a quick preview. This is going to be a big pond. That's the plan anyway, unless, you know, I get COVID again or, <laughs> you know, bad back or some, some stupid thing uh, derails my whole life uh, <laughs> as can happen, right? That's just life, right? Anyway, I know it's a garden channel, but ponds are, natural ponds are part of gardens. I find them just really fun. It's pleasant to watch the fish move around in them. It's incredibly tranquil. I'm not like a meditation guy or a Zen guy or anything like that, but, or maybe I am because I like staring into ponds and watching the fish and the frogs and everything sort of move around. Um, but anyway, it's, uh, um, I have a childlike fascination with ponds and in a garden it's just a great place to have a steady supply of water right I don't always want it you know my, my garden's like 50 yards from the house so if I need water I gotta walk 50 yards and walk 50 yards back it's easier just to put a bucket in the pond you know <laughs> and you know basically submerge the watering can in the pond count to 15 take it out water the plants and then I get all the benefit of all the fish poop and all the nutrients and all the other stuff that's in the pond going into the plants. So yeah, just a little update on the pond situation. Pond's doing great. Total success. Gonna fill it all in and make another one. <laughs> anyway, I hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. Check out my weekly column at MaritimeGardening.substack.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.